Hey everyone, you're watching the Get Started with Jenkins series. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use environment variables to safely store and use your credentials within Jenkins. So let's get going. So for the purpose of this video, I have set up a brand new Jenkins installation on a server somewhere. Now the first thing that we need to do to use environment variables is check that we have the correct plugin installed. So let's go to manage Jenkins, let's go to manage plugins and look in the tab installed and see if you can find the credentials binding plugin. If you can see it here in this tab, that means that you can continue watching this video. However, if you don't have this plugin here, go to the tab available search for the credentials binding over here in the filter section and install it into your Jenkins installation. So let's assume that we have a job that uploads some files to an FTP server. To authenticate with that FTP server, we of course need a username and a password, but we want to keep these credentials safe. Well, luckily Jenkins has a central credentials repository, a place where all your credentials can be safely stored. So let's go back to the Jenkins homepage and let's go to credentials to add this FTP username and password. So under the store sections, go to the Jenkins store, go to global credentials and click on add credentials. Right now we want to save a username and a password. So we're going to leave the kind to username with password. We're also going to leave the scope set to global because we might want to use these credentials in multiple jobs. Now you can fill in the username and the password for your FTP server or for something else. So let's do that right now. Let's say my user is called admin FTP. Let's give it a fake password. We can also give this credential an ID and we can use that ID later on to connect it with a job. So I'm going to call this one again, admin FTP and I'm going to give it a description the username that can connect to our FTP server, for example. I'm going to click OK to save these credentials in Jenkins. And there we go. So let's now go back to the home page and make a new job that uses these credentials. So I'm going to click create new job. This is also my very first job. And let's call it my upload job or something like that. This is going to be a freestyle project. I'm going to click OK. Now this is just a demo on how to use credentials. So I'm not going to configure uh, my Git repository in here. It's kind of a weird job. It's just to demonstrate how the credentials work and how you can use them in your jobs. So I'm going to scroll down to build environments and I'm going to check this box that says use secret texts or files. And when I do this, a new section pops up called bindings. And here we can bind a credential to our job. So if I click add, I can add a secret zip file, a secret file, secret text, but I can also add a username and password either conjoined or separated. Now I want my username and my password separated. So I'm going to click on username and password separated. Now Jenkins asks me where it should store the username and password. In other words, what should be the variable name of the username and what should be the variable name of my password. So in my case, I want to store the username in FTP underscore username. And I want to store the password in FTP underscore password. Now I use all caps here because it's sort of a convention that environment variables have all caps. The next thing that we need to do is to select a credential that will be binded to the username and the password variable. In this case, it's pre-filled with our admin FTP user because it's the only credential in our system. So we're going to leave it like that. And now we're ready to use our credentials in our build steps. So let me scroll down to build. Let's add a build step and let's assume that I want to use the Git FTP plugin to upload some files to my server. So I'm going to say execute shell and I'm going to type the command here. So that is Git FTP push and I have to give it my username. So instead of typing the username straight in here, I can now use the environment variable that we have defined above. 
So I can say FTP underscore username with a dollar sign in front of it. That signifies that it's an environment variable. I can also pass along my password. And that's of course stored in FTP underscore password. And then I can give it the address of my server. So I'm just going to give it a fake address here because this job obviously doesn't need to do anything. And that's it. We have created a credential and we can now use it as environment variables in our build steps. But it even gets cooler. The Jenkins credentials plugin actually hides the credentials from the console output. So let me comment this out. Let me just show you what happens if you echo these variables to the screen. If I say echo FTP username and echo FTP password, echo do you copy, for example. So let's save this job and let's run it to see if it really echoes the username and the password. So let's trigger a build now. This is gonna be the fastest build uh, in history, there we go. Let's go to the console output. And as you can see, it calls my echo commands, but it blanks out my username and it blanks out my password. And that's an awesome security feature that Jenkins offers. It does not expose your environment variables to people looking in the console output. So that was it for this video. I've showed you how you can safely store your credentials in Jenkins and then use them inside one of your jobs. If you liked this video, make sure to check out the rest of this series because I have a lot of other videos on how to use Jenkins. I'll also keep adding new videos to this series over time, so make sure to subscribe to this channel so you can see them whenever I publish them. And as always, thank you very much for watching.